The first step in the process will be bulk removal. Basically what that means is anything on top of the floor that's intended to be coated is going to be removed. In this case, the floor is covered over with underlayment, overlayment, epoxy, polyaspartic, and urethane resurfacer. For this reason, PCD tools are chosen because those are the most aggressive tools to be able to remove that bulk topical material. As can be seen from the video underneath the resurfacer and the underlayment is epoxy. And again, below that is polyaspartic. So multiple coatings that are on top of this tile floor where the ultimate goal is to get it completely clean so it's in a condition that's ready to be coated. But the PCDs have to be used to take the bulk of that material off before the next step in the process can take place. Once that's finished, the bulk can be removed either by squeegee, broom, vacuuming, just basically to clear it up so the next step in the process can take place. Vacuuming follows this to get the fine dust. Even though it's not anywhere near ready to coat, the cleaner it can be during the process, the better for the diamonds, for the result, and uh, for the productivity as well. Next up in the process is a 30 grit. The 30 grit is gonna be used to remove any of the residual materials that are still on the surface, and also to correct the damage that's taken place as a result of the PCDs. PCDs do a great job of removing the bulk coating, but they also do damage to the surface. The 30 grit here is going to be cleaning up and also smoothing out uh, the preceding step. This part of the process is faster because its only goal is to get whatever residual is still there and to smooth the floor out. At this point, the canvas, the floor is pretty open and clean. Now it's just a matter of refinement. Next in the process is a 70 grit. The 70 grit is done to refine the surface further because the coating that's going on is only going to be between 10 and 12 total mils dry film thickness. The scratches from the 30 grit are probably going to reflect or telegraph through the coating if they were left as is. The coating would stick just fine, but the concern would be seeing those scratches or those swirls through the finished system. The 70 grit helps to minimize the chances of that. So the 70 grit is used just to further process the surface, almost like polishing, but the floor still has enough abrasion to the surface that it is going to provide texture to that coating so that it can stick, as well as through absorption, uh, get maximum adhesion. Final step before the coating is vacuuming. This floor can't be shop plastic because it's getting such a thin coating, but it can be vacuumed thoroughly to remove all the dust so that coating will absorb and have nothing between it and the floor. The polyaspartic that's being applied is being used here as a primer, even though this also will be the top coat, this is the primary layer that is really used more for anything just to seal that stone off. It is a two component product, it's a long pot life product, but because of its being a polyaspartic, the curing time is gonna be much quicker, or at least the recoat time much quicker than what would be with the epoxy or an epoxy. Looking at it after a couple hours of drying, the floor has good clarity, good gloss. The stone has been enhanced. And at this point, it could either be coated with the second coat of the same, but in this case, an anti-slip additive is being added. This is a 60 grit resin sand, which is basically ground up epoxy. The amount that's in this lid is more than enough for the area that's going to be done. So it doesn't take very much of the anti-slip to do what it needs to do to provide some traction to the surface. Uh, if too much is used, the concern there would be how difficult the floor would be to clean. The rougher the floor is, the more difficult it will be for dirt and grease and whatever else gets on the floor to be recovered. So in the case of uh, additive for anti-slip, less is more. Same materials being applied now over the additive and the dried base layer. So basically this layer is gonna sandwich that dry additive that's been thrown on the floor between it and the base layer. This provides protection, but also it, it will bond that additive to the floor to provide that less slip or anti-slip surface, something that provides more traction for wet areas or anywhere that an otherwise glossy top coat might cause a safety issue. Closer inspection reveals same surface as before, but this time now with that second coat with that additive, the floor is more like a semi-gloss. 
it's hard to say exactly the difference, but because of that additive, it's broken up some of the reflection from that coating. So it's not nearly as glossy as it was before and ideally less slippery. It can be seen where the first coat is to the second coat with that additive, how it's changed that finish. And that's about it. That's how one would coat tile with a polyaspartic and anti-slip additive.